Now for these questions, we're multiplying whole numbers by 10. And there's an easy trick when it's a whole number that we're multiplying by 10. 33 times 10 is 330. So we just write the number with a zero on the end because 10 has one zero. So 580 times 10 is 5,800. Again, that's just 580 with a zero on the end. And 83,854 times 10 is 838,540. So you've just copied the number out, and because times 10, there's one zero in 10, you put one zero on the end. Now you have to be careful here. This trick only works when you're multiplying whole numbers rather than decimals by 10. If it's a decimal, you need a different method. But if it's a whole number, a zero on the end, and you've got the answer. Now we're multiplying by 100. And because we're multiplying whole numbers rather than decimals, there's a simple trick that we can use. 54 times 100 is 5,400. So that's just 54, what we started with, but with two zeros on the end. And that's because there's two zeros on the end of 100. So 606 times 100 is 60,600. That's just 606 with two zeros on the end. And 4,030 times 100 is 403,000. That's just 4,030, but with two zeros on the end because there's two zeros in 100. Now, this trick is really simple, but you have to be careful because it only works with whole numbers. If we have decimal numbers, we need to use a different method to multiply by 100. But with whole numbers, if you're multiplying by 100, you can just write two zeros on the end of the number. Now we're multiplying by 1,000. So 9 times 1,000 is 9,000. So we just take our number, and because there's three zeros in 1,000, we need three zeros on the end. Now this trick only works with whole numbers. If we've got decimals, we need to use a different method. But for these, for multiplying 80 or 421, these are whole numbers, so we're just going to write out the numbers, but with three zeros on the end. So 80 times 1,000 is 80,000. That's 80 with three zeros on the end. And 421 times 1,000 is 421,000. That's 421, but with three zeros on the end. Now here, we're dividing multiples of 10, so numbers that end in a zero, and we're dividing them by 10. And there's a nice trick for this. So 320 divided by 10 is 32. And that works because we can cancel the end zeros in our division, and then we just have 32 divided by 1. Well, any number divided by 1 is just that number. So our answer is 32. So 320 divided by 10 gives the same answer as 32 divided by 1. And we can do the same for 4050 divided by 10. If we cancel the end zeros, we have 405 divided by 1. So that's 405. We've just cancelled the end zeros to get our answer. And it's the same for 555,500 divided by 10. We cancel the end zeros, and then we have 55,550. So, cancelling the zeros when you're dividing by 10 is a nice, easy trick that can give you the answer straight away. So here, we have multiples of 100, so numbers that end in two zeros, and we're dividing by 100. So there's a nice, easy trick for this. 5,600 divided by 100 is 56, because we can cancel two end zeros, and then we have 56 divided by 1. And we know any number divided by 1 is just that number, so our answer is 56. So 5,600 divided by 100 gives the same answer as 56 divided by 1. 
and we can do the same thing for 15,000 divided by 100. We can cancel two n zeros, so then we have 150 divided by 1, which is 150. And we have to be careful here, we still need this zero, we can't cancel this zero because there's two n zeros in 100, so we can only cancel two of our n zeros in the dividend. So 15,000 divided by 100 gives the same answer as 150 divided by 1. Now 430,300 divided by 100. When we write it out and cancel the end zeros, we get 4,303, so that's our answer. And again, you can see what we're doing with the end zeros. Now, we have numbers that end in three zeros, so multiples of a thousand, and we're dividing by a thousand. So 7,000 divided by 1,000 is 7 because we can cancel three n zeros, and seven divided by one, well, any number divided by one, is just that number. So our answer is seven. So 7,000 divided by 1,000 gives the same answer as seven divided by one. And we can do the same thing with 55,000 divided by 1,000, because we have three zeros on the end of our number, and we're dividing by a, a thousand, so we can cancel those three end zeros. 55 divided by 1 is 55, so that's our answer. And you can see the same pattern we get with the zeros. Now, 290,000 divided by a thousand. Well, here we have to be careful. We have four zeros on the end of our number, but in a thousand we only have three end zeros, so we can only cancel three of our end zeros. So 290 divided by one is 290, so that's our answer. And again, you can see what we're doing. We're cancelling three end zeros because there's three end zeros in a thousand. 50 times what is 5,000? Well, if we look closely at the number 5,000, we can see the first two digits, we have 50, and then we have two zeros on the end. Now, we know that when we multiply by 100, because there's two zeros, if it's a whole number, we can just put two zeros on the end. So 50 times 100 is 5,000. 446 times what is 446,000? Well, with 446,000, we have 446, so the number we started with, but then with three zeros on the end. And we know that when we multiply by a thousand, if it's a whole number, we can just put three zeros on the end. So our missing number is a thousand. 250 times what is 2,500? Well, here we have 250, so the number we started with, but with one zero on the end. And we know that when we times by 10, we put one zero on the end. So our missing number is 10. 40,000 divided by what is 40? Well, if we look at the number 40,000, the first two digits are the same as our answer. So we have 40, and then we have three more zeros. And we know that when we divide by a thousand, we can cancel our three end zeros. So 40,000 divided by a thousand is 40. If we write that out, you can see there's three end zeros in a thousand, so we can cancel three of our end zeros in 40,000, and then we just have 40 divided by one, which is 40. Now, 50,200 divided by what is 502? Well, if we look at our dividend, we have our answer, our quotient, we have 502, and then we have two zeros on the end. And we know that when we divide by 100, because there's two zeros in 100, we can cancel our two end zeros. So our missing number here is 100. And you can see, if you write out the question, all you're doing is cancelling two end zeros when you divide by a hundred. Now, 525,000 divided by what 
is 52,500. Well, if we look at 525,000, the first five digits are the same as our answer, and then we just have one more zero on the end. And we note that to cancel that zero, we would have to divide by 10. Again, we can write it out. And if we cancel, we can only cancel one of these end zeros because there's only one zero in 10. And then we get 52,500 divided by one. So that's 52,500.